everyone, welcome to another video from me, Mr. Cobalman at FS Pro. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the tutorial flight provided by PMDG for their 737 NGX aircraft. This tutorial flight introduces us to some of the basics of flying the aircraft on a sample flight from Gatwick in the south of the UK to Amsterdam a major hub in the Netherlands. We start with our pre-flight initialization and then follow up by coding in all the required information for flying our route into the flight management computer. So here down at the captain's MCDU we'll select FS actions and set the fuel for one third. Next up we'll select the payload and we'll set that to full. We'll change our cargo to read 680 kilograms in the aft section first and then the forward section. We do it in that order to make the calculation for the centre of gravity easier. Bit of a pause here on my computer, not sure why. And that's done. And now we'll go back to the POSINIT page. Here we'll enter Echo Golf Kilo Kilo, the code for Gatwick, into our reference airport. And by doing it this way, when we go to the route page, we can also enter in the same details directly from the scratch pad into the origin. Now we'll enter Echo Hotel Alpha Mike, the ICAL code for Amsterdam, as the destination. I'll enter FS Pro 73 to the flight number. And now I'll enter in the SID. We'll do this by pressing the Depth R button, selecting the departure, selecting runway 08 right, the Clacton 5P SID. And that's as good to go. Onto the route page now. Our route's really, really simple. We'll take Uniform Lima 620 Airway straight to the Redfer Waypoint. And that pretty much is our route. It's a SID. What bit of a route? And then the star. So enter our star next by hitting the Depart button again. Select the Eham Arrivals. Select the Redf 1A star. Select runway 18 right, ILS 18 right to be more specific, and the SUG 3B transition. Over to the legs page, we're going to remove a constraint here that's not needed at Redfer. It's been superseded by events, so we'll just delete that constraint. Next, we're going to uh, copy Sugol into the scratch pad and overlay an earlier Sugol entry. Details for this are too, uh, too deep complicated to go into here, so do check out the tutorial for this. Next, we'll enter in a constraint at Sugol at 250B. Uh, That's 250 knots or below at 10,000 feet at Sugol for a constraint. With that done, we'll activate, execute, and now enter in zero fuel weight by pressing the LSK appropriate to that number twice. Next, I'll enter 23.3 tons to the reserves, 25 to the cost index, 6,000 to the transition altitude, 250 to the cruise altitude, and at this stage I can execute I'm going to have a quick look at the legs page to make sure that I'm seeing what I expect to see here with predicted speed and altitude, which I do. Um, I'm going to go back and execute the information we have just entered earlier, though. Before selecting the N1 limit page, and entering a derated takeoff 2 option, 
and entering 40 to the cell out LSK. Next we'll select takeoff, enter 5 degrees for the flaps, enter the centre of gravity by pushing the appropriate LSK twice again, and then entering the V speeds. With that done, it's time to configure the aircraft. So let's go down to the trim. I want to enter in 5.04. 5.03 is the closest I'm going to get doing it this way. I think that will do fine, so we'll do that. We'll set the flaps to 5. That's three clicks on the flap switch. And then we'll set the auto brakes to RTO for rejected takeoff. We'll enter in the speed of 143, which is V2, to our IAS MAC indicator. Set the heading to 079, which is our runway heading. and our altitude to 5000 but let's get these control columns out of the way first and dial in 5000 for the altitude we'll switch on the captain's flight director followed by the first officer's flight director then the auto throttle VNAV and LNAV and now we'll set the TCAS to TARA and set the squawk to 2200. Next up we'll switch the barometer to work in hectopascals. Set the map display range to 10 nautical miles and click the traffic button so we can see traffic on the MFD. We'll also select the data page so I can see information for the flight there as well. Switch the ISFD to work in hectopascals and we'll get the engine information displayed on the upper page here on the engine display unit. Switch the landing lights to on. Switch the nav lights to strobe and steady. Anti-collision lights to on. Both engine start selectors to continuous. And for the pressure page we'll set our altitude to 25,000 feet for our cruise altitude and zero feet for our destination airport. Amsterdam's just a little bit below sea level. And that's us done as far as the preparation goes. We're now ready for the takeoff roll. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please stick with us for more exciting videos on flight simulation here at FS Pro with me, Mr. Cobalman. Thanks for watching.